So quick reminder of uh, what Spark Lineage is all about. Um, Data Hub Spark Lineage is a jar. You drop it into your Spark application and there are helpful guides for exactly how you do that. Um, and when the Spark application runs, um, the jar essentially is a listener to the Spark application events uh, and it produces uh, metadata events out and sends it over to the Data Hub metadata service. Uh, Mukta actually recorded uh, a couple of nice demos uh, for us to walk through. Uh, and it basically produces metadata for data, um, jobs, the, the Spark application as a pipeline, as well as the uh, input and output data sets that the job consumed and produced. So we'll, I'll just play the uh, notebook um, version because that's, I think, um, pretty easy to follow through. And we're gonna do the 1.5X version. Let me know if this I, is... Let's see how we can use our okay. data of Spark image in Jupyter Notebook. Here, we have a couple of imports specifically for SpySpark. And after that, when we create a Spark session using Spark session builder, we will specify master, whichever we want to make local, or it can be a cluster uh, setup as well. And then the app name. App name is important uh, because the app name, whatever we specify here, will be reflected in data. Shashank, I think we lost the audio. Right now it's running on my localhost, so it's localhost, but it can be on some other server as well. Then I have two CSVs, which I have read. One CSV contains information about all the airports and where that airport is, uh, which city and state and all that. And whereas flights, flight CSV uh, contains the information about when was the flight, uh, uh, day of the month, day of the week, carrier, what was the origin airport and what is the destination airport ID. And whatever the delays, uh, whichever are present, like departure delay, but and arrival delay. In this particular notebook, I'm going to work on departure delays. See how the departure delays are affecting uh, are affected by the airport and the carrier together. So what I have done here, I have merged the two CSVs to get all the data together. After that, I have added aggregation function uh, over the de delay, mean department delay, and whatever the information which we have received, we have just written into the table. Such kind of information will be useful in further model training where uh, can be used for further analysis, let's say in model training where uh, instead of just giving the departure uh, airport, if we provide the average delay at that airport for the given carrier, it might be better for those models. So that's why we created this and stored it into the hub uh, in a table, which will be further utilized by our pipe, which will be utilized further by our pipeline, and then just pass that stop. So I'm just going to execute this notebook, okay? And then we will see that this executed notebook, uh, we will see how it gets reflected into our data hub. So let me open our data hub uh, UI port and we will see, quickly see how it is being executed. So right now it's being it's executing. Now here is the pipeline. So if we go to the pipelines, we have Spark because the pipeline was executed over a Spark. Here it is whatever the master which we have. So if I have, let's say Spark master colon seven seven, then that particular thing will pop up over here. I'll just click on local and this is our pipeline. So this is the name of the pipeline, which is getting reflected from this, our app name, flight departure analysis. So let's go inside path departure analysis documentation. Here we can see when the job was started, when the job, uh, what was the application name, who created, uh, who has triggered the job, uh, what was the ID of that app inside uh, Spark uh, context. In addition, here they will see task. In our notebook, we have only one task which actually writes or updates something and everything before this is read only. So those things won't get recorded. Only thing where we are actually storing something will get recorded. So as we can see, we have a save as a table at native methods or whatever. Uh, so save method. Uh, we can here see it has a properties and properties we can see what was the departure like application name, complete data, description. Important thing is here we have a query plan which is important logical query plan which is getting showed and what was the execution query execution ID. So we can actually relate this query execution ID as well as the app ID to the Spark history server in case we want to link the two things together. And inside this job there the lineage is being created. So there are two upstream lineages and one downstream because we read from the two CSV files and we write to a data set. So if we see this is a data set uh, which is a high data set and the, before these two are the HDFS data set because we are reading it from the HDFS and processing it. 
as you can see, there are different uh, lineages. Uh, so there is no upstream. There is only one downstream, which is being created by this. So all the information related to this is present uh, inside this, and we can uh, see what how it is. Awesome. So let's get out of this. Cool. So back, um, I will post uh, both of these videos, uh, one that shows how to do this with the notebook and the other with kind of the Spark submit option and how to add the jars on the spark.conf. Uh, documentation for this is also available on uh, the website. Uh, what's coming next is Spark 3.x support, uh, support for Databricks um, environments and column level lineage. So there were a couple of questions around column level lineage as well. Uh, the models are getting uh, released next week and then we'll follow soon with integrations with specific sources uh, spark is on that short list so we'll start seeing column level lineage getting produced from these uh, spark emitters as well <laughs>